something and I'll just pull it off as if it's an old thing. That type stuff contributes. Does that mean I'm gonna take my, my lovely copper earrings off? No, I ain't gonna do it. So y'all know there's just certain things y'all not gonna do. Even when some of us start the losing locks, some of us won't stop going to get the retightenings. It's like an addiction. You're gonna still keep going to get the retightening because you're fixated on this style. You want this, you know the possibility, you have experienced the bliss, and in less than until all hell breaks loose and you wake up one morning and all 500 of the locks are on your pillowcase, you're probably gonna still keep going. I've talked to sisters who have continued to get their hair locked the same way by the same person, even while they were continuing to lose locks and not even just isolate a part of your hair, take them all out or cut them short, doctor them up, strengthen them up, then go back and relock them and try something else. Here's another thing. Here's a perfect example. Let's take these, these locks that I married, okay? One of these was from the ones that I created. It's it, too close to the front of my head. It was bound to thin out, but I didn't realize that back in the day. Remember, I'm the one that asked Steve Fries to go through. I picked them out and she separated them, telling me uh, what some of the, the ills might be or how it was going to affect my grid. I wanted them thin. I wanted, I, I, I still, when I would see other people with thinner locks, wanted mine even thinner. Do I want that today? Hell no. Is it because of the number of locks and the time it would take to retighten? Hell no. It's because of the fact that the thinner your locks are, the greater the likelihood is going to be that you are going to lose some locks if you do not marry them. Now, hit that example. I married this lock here. Now, eventually, I'm just going to cut this whole piece off. I got to. What do I need to put more stress on this trying to keep this? Uh-uh. So for those of you who do consider marrying your locks, if your loctician doesn't isn't willing to consider cutting off one of those locks, maybe that's something you should be willing to consider. All right, that's something I'm bringing to the table. I don't know if other people are doing it or not, but if you happen to marry a lock, at some stage of them marrying, when you're secure that the hair is tangled to the extent possible, in order for you to maintain the lock, you might want to consider that. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Greetings, welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. Thank you all for coming to the channel. I love you, I love you, I love you. I want to thank all of y'all for supporting the channel and to thank y'all for supporting me in the work that I do in terms of trying to get content out to you that I think that matters. Today, I'm kind of going to be a little bit all over the place, but I have kind of a lot on my mind. I got my retightening done yesterday. Y'all know already, uh, I do the front part of my hair because I just need to be accountable now for what's going on with the front part of my hair. Um, the nature of my sister locks journey has transformed over time. And whereas it used to be about the beauty of the style and enjoying the fullness and all of that. Now I find myself getting a lot more serious about taking a preventive approach because of some things that I'm starting to conclude and realize about this sister locks journey or micro locks or whatever. So I'll talk briefly about that, but yes, I got my retightening yesterday with the lovely e fries i had to drive well into uh the atlanta area yesterday i was uh there at 7 15 in the morning i also had to get my braces done i'm trying to condense stuff i got my acupuncture from my old acupuncturist not the lady that i found down here in albany but um my locks have been on my mind this morning because the back which is getting much longer it's growing longer all over but if these up here were back there they would look long too but i've done more picking on this my hair over the years so i've you know picked my ends off trying to ocd i'm not going there but so with my hair you know there's a lot that i have to consider learning what i know ignorance is bliss but ignorance uh creates a lot of pain as well so i find myself talking about quite a bit because before I went in to get my hair done, I decided to marry two of my locks. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that as well. You all know that over time when I would have my hair to grow out around here, I wanted to capture those little locks 
and or that hair and I didn't want to keep trying to combine it into a lock that already existed because it would keep coming out it would slip and it would just never grow and so I found a way to nurture those little pieces of hair and to build a lock which is what this here was all about okay um, which is what this is this is a lock that I'm doing that with um, I've been able to to grow more hair in around my edges uh, this before this last retightening I had a lot of fuzzy stuff around my hairline up here now I know what we say about being able to thicken our hair and not get more than what we started out with and all of those kind of fatalistic limited thinking sort of things and while they may have been true for mankind since the beginning of time I don't believe in thinking in terms of limitation so I think anything is possible I know that the little fuzzies that I'm getting I'm not making those up I remember what my hair felt like in these two areas before I even got locks to most people my hair looked really thick um, I was able to style my hair in ways I didn't have thin hair I'm not gonna say I had thin hair but I didn't have super thick hair either like my sister did where like you can hold this and you, uh, this amount of hair and it felt like these locks i would consider my hair medium but i know in this area and in an area at the nape of my neck right in the center where that little slant is in your neck i always had thinner hair in those areas so whenever i would get my retightenings done it really looked plucked chicken and i know today it doesn't look as bad and i know the only thing that i've done differently in the last few months was use that uh, magical hair growth serum and I'm not trying to pitch that at this particular time although I will pitch it because I know that it works and I know that it's been working for a lot of women and that's not to say it's going to work for everybody because we all come to this thing with different needs but what I can tell you about either of those two products is that they're going to help your hair be healthy and if you have thinning hair in one area the likelihood of you experiencing hair loss in other areas along your journey is greater than not so i woke up this morning thinking gosh my hair's feeling a little heavier since i got the retightening what the hell because i also did a clarifying shampoo and my hair feels light when i'm like this it feels light but the longer it gets obviously the heavier it's going to get I, no matter what I'm doing because of the length, because of the fact that this is a mass of dead hair. And eventually as the, we go through the growth cycle, this part, the shaft, if you want to call it, is going to be a little heavier than the root. And at some point I may need to make a decision to cut my hair. Now I'm not anywhere near that space now. I'm trying to avoid uh, having to even consider that. But I have to tell you, when I speak about the nature of the way my hair care journey has changed, that's the shit I think about all the time. And part of it is because, not all the time, because I'm not trying to manifest it, but it's something I'm studying. It's something I'm investigating. It's something I'm coming up with a remedy for. In fact, I'm working on two additional products that have been in research and development. And I'm going to keep until I find what is God's abundance and God's gift, something that can help to prolong hair loss or help you to regrow some hair or help you to stave off some of the ills of a style like this. Let me tell you about how my, my journey has sort of morphed. Like I said in the beginning, I, I really, this, it was all about the style. Hair loss was never even anything I ever thought about. That was not my problem. That was somebody else's problem. It's something that I felt. Uh, compassionate about and when I would see hair loss you know because I watched a, a lady who the first lady I ever saw besides Serena I think which maybe she was the second that had sister locks this whole area and moving back I watched her just lose one lock at a time and the whole part came out and I need to call Dan that too she had um alopecia I think she might have been having some issues before her sister locks I actually need to to speak with her because at that time I wasn't collecting data and I wasn't asking from an investigative standpoint. I was asking from a place of concern. Now, when I'm asking questions of sisters and I'm talking to people about hair loss and stuff, I'm asking from an investigative standpoint about hair loss in general, but also about their experiences, what the nature is of what they were doing before it started. When did they notice it get exacerbated? Do they feel it's connected to their lock journey? I'm trying to gather history, right? This shit is important. And I'm, the reason why is because this is a traumatic experience. It is traumatic when you lose your hair. I used to say, I used to have this um, thing where I would say, okay, 
God, if I had to die by fire or if I had to die by, uh, or if I had to lose my eyes or my ears, which would I prefer? Would I prefer to be blind? Would I prefer to be de to, to, to um, be deaf? Or if I had to die, would I prefer to die in a fire or to drown? And I always felt myself like not being able to pick either one of them necessarily because they, they're, they're all awful. I think I would probably, I don't know, losing your hearing could just make you feel crazy, but y'all, my eyes, this is me. But what I'm saying is, I don't want to lose anything. I want it all, just like y'all do. No one wants to catastrophize and think about the worst possible scenario. But what I am coming to find, okay? And I will say this with a lot of confidence because both of my grandmothers had a head full of hair before they passed away. One was a beautician, so she was always using heat and stuff on her hair, and she did things the old-fashioned way. Both of them had a head full of hair. My sister Sharifa, who passed away, she had a ton of hair. My mother's hair is still thick. I still have my hair. In any event that I start to experience some thinning, it's not going to cross my mind that I have uh, male or female uh, pattern baldness, that it's a genetic thing. I don't, I'm not buying into that. And in addition to that, because of what I know about epigenetics and neuroscience, I'm not going to buy into the genetic link anyway because we know too much today and the research is saying that environmental things totally outweigh any genetic correlation whatsoever. These are facts. Environmental things as in what you do, what you're exposed to, how you think, all of that. So I would be not a good candidate to talk about um, how genetic, the role of genetics would, would overplay or outplay um, the things that we do to our hair. In other words, if I start to experience some hair loss, Lord forbid, I'm going to be looking at the style. These are the things I have to think about. I also have to think about this because I'm past 10 years, y'all. I've gotten a great ride out of this hairstyle. I would take it to the grave if I could. But I've gotten a great ride out of this hairstyle. It doesn't even seem like it's been 10 years or 10 years plus. But I know, okay, I want to get... I'm going to call it. I want 30 more years out of this hairstyle. I, at a minimum, I want another 15. At a minimum. But that ain't going to come free. Why ain't that going to come free? Because of a lot of mitigating factors. The same way I use that anti-aging serum to work on these, smoothing these lines out. And y'all, whoever that sister was that just texted me, that told me uh, yesterday, I wish I had my phone beside me and I could give you a shout out. I love you. Uh, I wish I could think of her name, but she's only been using that uh, anti-aging serum for a few days and already she's seeing a difference. I know, and th I've been using it more consistently since I moved down here to the country than I have been throughout the whole journey. Because, you know, you start to drop off on things. You see that it's working. And you're like, oh, okay. Then you take a little break here. I'm one that believes sometimes we need to take a break from different things and then go back to them. And I'm always studying. I'm all, I have a very, I'm a Virgo. But I know since I've been down here, I've been using it consistently. So that's about eight months. And I'm seeing a difference now, even in the fine lines that were smoothing out before. Because y'all know I've had those lines in my forehead. I had them since my probably late 20s, early 30s. And I'm noticing a big difference. So I'm always trying to improve on something. I'm always studying something. I'm always trying to make life better. I want to make life better for us with regard to this journey, whether you have sister locks or micro locks. And that is becoming something that I'm really, really studying with working on my uh, second aromatherapy certification, along with a lot of other things and paying attention to what's going on and taking your feedback, okay, and using it constructively to look at things from an analytical standpoint. Because the bottom line is this. The more and more you do something, the more and more Albie runs around the yard in, the, at that, in that same circuit, the more and more she drives a hole in the yard and then it's, it loses the grass and then it becomes all dirt, then it becomes a swamp. And the more and more she continues doing that, friction, repetitive movement, it's no different than carpal tunnel syndrome. If you sit at the typewriter and you're doing this all day, eventually you're going to experience some type of the majority of people, not everybody, because that's a limiting belief as well. But if you're not doing anything to begin to counteract what is 
a necessary or what may be a more likely outcome, then you're going to suffer that same problem. So here I am sitting up here at 10 years into my journey, a little bit past 10 years in my journey. And there's some things I really got to start rethinking because I want to get more than another 10 years out of this journey. I definitely want to get 10. I definitely want to get 15 Would love 30, but there's the last thing I want to be having to do, and I will cut this if I have to, to lighten the load down the line because my hair is growing fast. But the last thing I want to have to do is lose the style. Now, I've never had an afro. I'm probably a little cute with an afro. But I definitely ain't going back to relaxers. And natural hair is my thing. And this is my thing. And this is what I love. So I look at this thing from a very uh, logical and left brain approach. Sister locks, micro locks, braids, cornrows, these are high risk styles. I don't give a damn what anybody says. These are high risk styles. That is why you can see women wear so-called protective styles and still lose their hair, period. I'm gonna say it again and it could be controversial. This is my experience. This is what I believe. These are high risk styles. Now there are certain things that we do as a result of having these styles that contribute to them being high risk. So we have to, we have to begin to rethink the way we manage these styles so that it aligns with our desire that it be a protective hairstyle. I've seen women wear protective hairstyles. Under the weaves, I used to do weaves. I told you I did box braids and weaves. Used, weaves just get paid for it when I was in school, when I was in college, when I was in high school. Um, did my my girls' hair when they when they were little. That was my thing. I used to love hair. My my aunts are a cosmetologists. My grandmother was a cosmetologist, and she had a business in her basement. So I grew up around hair. So I had so wonder. Everybody thought I was going to be a cosmetologist. I'm not, but I was doing my own hair from the time I was five years old. So, and I always cared about how my hair looked, but didn't spend a lot of time on my hair and didn't like to be a slave to my hair. But I do like to look nice. And this is a style that allows me to do that. So I love it. And I'm glad I chose this because I never thought I would go natural. But at the same time, the longer you uh, uh, participate in this journey, the greater the risks can be if you do not manage the unexpected things, the undesirables, and the potential outcomes of what it takes to, or what this style demands. When I say protective styles, I consider this in a manner of speaking a protective style because it would take a lot more for me to grow my hair to this length with a relaxer. This is helping to protect my hair. That's one of the reasons why we choose these styles because we're able to feel and see the abundance of the way our hair can, can manifest as African women or women of the African diaspora, black people. But I've seen protective styles under hair weaves. I've seen people wear those styles and I've seen their hair still thin and fall because they don't do certain things and we put the hair in the protective style and we think we can just forget about it and we don't have to do anything. We don't need to moisturize it. We don't think we need to spray it with oil. We can just put that wig on. We think we can live without, we think we can live without vitamin D. We can just put that wig on or put them styles on our hair and never do anything with our hair. This is a living thing. Just like your body, it's living, it is alive, it is representative of life force energy. We have to do certain things to maintain it. And my job today is to do everything I can and to inform y'all to the extent possible about any and everything that you might want to consider doing on your natural hair care journey to keep your hair looking like what it's supposed to look like. And I think I'm going to put a, a little commercial about I Am Melanin Magic right here for those of you who don't know how to get the product or want to find more out about the product or are just interested in trying to beef up your hair and give your hair something to fall back on. Because if you are not using I Am Melanin Magic Hair Oil, then what are you using? Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic since February of this year and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. 
See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic hair and skin care brand. My vision has always been to develop a line of products that meets the unique needs of melanated people. The I Am Melanin Magic hair oil is our premier product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage, promotes growth, and can be used on all hair types and looks from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and anti-funk, so you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. This really is all you need. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. The proof is in the product. Need I say more? Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic, and so are you. I am of the belief that at some point, either due to dietary uh, uh, deficiency, due to the constant trauma that you experience from these retightenings, whether it be the frequency of them, the, the way that your loctician uh, controls for the quality of it or so many other factors, uh, be it hormonal, be it some health issues, that, uh, some stresses you encounter in your life which regard, re require you to take certain medications. Many of you have gotten COVID and had quite a bit of hair loss. Lose some weight, okay? When my daughter Naima lost those 30 pounds at the beginning of COVID and she was taking that... Uh, uh, weight loss journey and she was losing she was working hard to lose it but um, she started cutting back on calories and she was still eating well but she started dropping the weight the hair started dropping as well it could be any number of things that will affect you get pregnant that may affect you and instead of losing your loose hair you might lose a few locks so for me to minimize the collateral damage of what you could be predisposed to, you have to make sure that your hair is, is, is in as good a shape as, as it can be. You've got to supplement. You don't have the option of not supplementing. If you didn't do it in the beginning, then you need to be doing it now as you move further into your journey. You have to build capacity of your hair to resist everything that is an onslaught to your health care health, health care journey down to watching what you put in it, making sure the shampoo you use is not problematic, making sure you wash thoroughly, which I was not doing. I'm gonna talk to you about that in one of these upcoming videos so that your hair is able to breathe, so that your hair is um, not being weighed down unnecessarily. That's uh, Ronnie calling, she was subbing today. I had a great idea for the channel. I was gonna sit here, guess what? And she was like, mommy, I'm dealing with these little third graders. I'm gonna have to call you back later. But um, yeah, I had an idea for her. So um, my thing is not so much if it's going to happen, but being able to manage it when it happens. And the only way you're gonna be able to manage it when it begins to happen is to catch it early. Early intervention is to catch it early. Number two, to look at all the mitigating factors and to begin to act in an investigative capacity to see what's going on. Your loctician is not going to be able to assist you with this. I'm sorry, even though they stand over your head like they do, the majority of them, I'm not gonna make that blanket statement. Even though they stand over the head, your head like they do, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. This is your hair. It's kind of like saying, expecting the loctician to know if she's hurting your hair, it's not her hair. You are the one that can feel it. So the same is true with regard to your natural hair care journey. She may have some suggestions she may make. She may say, oh, maybe you have alopecia. You need to see a dermatologist. Bada, bada, bing, bada, bada, boom. You are the one that's going to have to say, well, um, six, seven months ago, it was fine. Uh, when I look at this picture, it looked like that. 
I do remember at that time I made this change, that change, and this change, or I did this, that, and this. It's just like me saying with this one here that I'm trying to grow. This is a tiny piece of hair. Now, I've been plaiting it. I've been trying to, I, I would have a little piece of hair in it that would hold it up until a certain point so that I could get just enough of about an inch or an inch and a half, and then I know that it would be more stable, and then I might add a little piece of something to it. But this is not going to be able to stay on here because this is eventually going to be too much weight. With the shedding hairs along with those additional hairs, it's going to weigh it down. And that's why extensions are a no-no. And you do it for breakdown maintenance if you absolutely have to. But if you can prevent yourself from having to do it, don't do it. I said this video will be all over the place and it kind of is. But so the focus of my hair care journey has changed. Whereas in the beginning it was, you know, oh, the, the, uh, those beautiful curls and I love curls and I still love curls, y'all. The color, you know, um, just the beauty of it every day. Like I don't think so much about the locks the way I used to when I wake up every day. I used to wake up. Oh, thank you, God. And I'm thankful. It's this hairstyle is just so beautiful. I might've been my own lock crush because I was so in love with the, with, the, with, the, with the style and with the fact that I was blessed with someone who introduced me to Sister Locks in the first place. But it was more of an outward thing in the sense of, I didn't, wasn't too concerned. If I was that concerned about the health of my locks, I wouldn't have been obsessively picking out length, which I still do now, but I try to be a little more tender. And then my locks would break because I would continue to pick and pick and pick, or I would pick all the way up to here, take that out, and then either try to relock it, you know, with that, with that, with the way that they do it, or either, uh, and then get to the point where I would sew it closed, or either maybe I would just plait it down and wait for it to do what it was going to do. The bottom line is, I did a lot to my locks, colored them many, many, many a time. This is the first time I've gone without color. It'll be coming up maybe on ten months to a year soon. I'm going to try to leave the color alone for a while. Why? Because I'm getting further in my journey. I can't keep still putting a whipping on my locks and expect them to continue to be, you know, doing what, what it is that they need to do to make me happy when I know I've been at this for a while. And based on what I see, this is a style that has the potential to put you at risk. Me too. I, that doesn't mean I'm getting them out, but the facts are the facts. Why is that? Because there is repetitive styling and trauma by way of the reties, the hair continues to shed and we hold on to it and it brings some weight to your hair irregardless all right um styling stress if you're coloring if you're pulling on your hair if you're doing all these great styles somehow we have an addiction to tight retightenings we need it to be on the scalp you know all of these different things uh there are a million different things that i could talk about it, even like this i will constantly something will get stuck on an earring and i'll just pull it off as if it's no thing. That type stuff contributes. Does that mean I'm gonna take my, my lovely copper earrings off? No, I ain't gonna do it. So y'all know there's just certain things y'all not gonna do. Even when some of us start the losing locks, some of us won't stop going to get the retightenings. It's like an addiction. You're gonna still keep going to get the retightening because you're fixated on this style. You want this, you know the possibility, you have experienced the bliss, and in less than until all hell breaks loose and you wake up one morning and all 500 of the locks are on your pillowcase, you're probably going to still keep going. I've talked to sisters who have continued to get their hair locked the same way by the same person, even while they were continuing to lose locks and not even just isolate a part of your hair, take them all out or cut them short, doctor them up, strengthen them up, then go back and relock them and try something else. Here's another thing. Here's a perfect example. Let's take these, these locks that I married, okay? One of these was from the ones that I created. It's it, too close to the front of my head. It was bound to thin out, but I didn't realize that back in the day. Remember, I'm the one that asked the fries to go through. I picked them out and she separated them, telling me uh, what some of the, the ills might be or how it was going to affect my grid. I wanted them thin. I wanted, I, I, I still, when I would see other people with thinner locks, wanted mine even thinner. Do I want that today? Hell no. Is it because of the number of locks and the time it would take to retighten? Hell no. It's because of the fact that the thinner your locks are, the greater the likelihood is going to be that you are going to lose some locks. 
if you do not marry them. Now, hit that example, I married this lock here. Now, eventually, I'm just gonna cut this whole piece off. I got to. What do I need to put more stress on this trying to keep this? Uh-uh. So for those of you who do consider marrying your locks, if your loctician doesn't, isn't willing to consider cutting off one of those locks, maybe that's something you should be willing to consider. All right, that's something I'm bringing to the table. I don't know if other people are doing it or not, but if you happen to marry a lock, at some stage of them marrying, when you're secure that the hair is tangled to the extent possible, in order for you to maintain the lock, you might wanna consider cutting it. Now, again, I don't suggest things that I have not done on some level or have not seen or don't have some type of experience with. You gonna watch me at some point in this journey, cut this, this lock off, all right? I'm gonna cut the whole lock off and we're gonna see how this continues to grow. Now, I didn't like it, didn't want them combined in the first place because it's gonna be thicker. I don't want it to be thicker looking in the grid, but guess what? I'm gonna do that now because I'm 10 plus years into the journey and I'm supposed to be wiser and I'm supposed to be less concerned with some of these little things and more concerned with the big picture, which is keeping my locks from falling out, okay? All right, that's what this is about, keeping my locks. That's going to be the title of the video, keeping my locks from falling out. And that's got to be your concern too. And y'all, we've got to raise awareness. We've got to raise awareness or either you have to take this thing in your own hands. When I say raise awareness, you have to be talking to your loctician. You have to vote with your feet when you're dealing with somebody who's making a mess of your hair. That's becoming very common as well. I was talking to you Friday today about all the horror stories that she hears from sisters of the things that these women have done to their hair. And one of the number one things people are doing is marrying locks. Not for the reasons that I'm talking about. Marrying them because you got too many and they need to shorten that retightening time. Marrying them because they don't feel like, they're just trifling and they don't feel like um, uh, uh, taking the extra time to do your hair properly. So it becomes the outcome of somebody being neglectful or negligent or just unethical or just unprofessional. Okay. Th this is serious. Like th this is our hair. It's not so much the money thing, even though it is, but it's that, you know, like this is my baby. Like this is my thing. This is, you take care of your hair. Like you're taking care of your children, right? except you got 500 of them or 400 of them or however many hundred of them you have. You took this journey seriously, especially if you made it past the difficult years and you want to reap the rewards of the journey. The last thing you want is someone to come and crap on it and show disregard for everything that you have invested in. So these are serious things, y'all. Times have changed. We don't have the same level of conscientiousness that we had when I was growing up whereby people did right by their neighbors and they did what they had to do. You didn't have to go back and check so much what you, what you expected. You didn't have to inspect what you expected all the time. People had a level of artistry and a level, level of mastery that they were proud of. I look at this, this house. This house is a perfect example. This is a, 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 a national his home that's on the historic registry. When you look at the way this house, I don't care where you are in this house, it feels secure and solid. Like, I can't explain it. Hardwood floors, when you look at the, the way things were built by hand, the man who sold me this house, him and his wife, can you see that banister? I don't know if you can see it. He did this with his hands, that banister going up the steps. It's a curved railing. He did this with his hands. Outside my porch where I walk, he carved each piece of wood by hand. He had it milled and he did the tongue and groove himself, which is why it's going to be hell to try to replace it. And some of it needs to be replaced. And I have to, to, to follow certain guidelines because it's a historic home. My point is that look, look at these pocket doors over here. Can you see these pocket doors right there? Them brown doors that pull out outside of the wall this is the type of stuff i'm talking about the 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 12 foot ceilings the the woodworking all of the details people don't work like that anymore people don't have that kind of work ethic anymore that was like our generation y'all and above for those of you who are in your 40s and 50s so we're dealing today with people who if they don't have a passion for it and thank goodness for those out there, those young sisters who do have a passion for it, or for those people that do have ethical standards and practice uh, in ways that, that make the profession credible. But people are money hungry today. People are not taking the time they used to take. 
people are uh, strapped. They're exhausted. They're tired. They're not as conscientious. Everybody's being pulled a lot of different ways. So what I'm saying and saying that is that you have to be your own advocate, just like in the healthcare industry today. One month before my sister was dying, they had on 21 medications. If my mother was not present, it probably would have been 30 or 35, but there's no way under the sun anybody's going to survive on 21 medications. How the hell can you? By the time you get past four or five, you need to have a big question mark. It's, it's just not, it's too many contraindications. There's too many different things that those synthetic drugs were doing to her body, but she had professional people with white coats on, with clipboards and iPads and little things that we're putting into the database in order to prescribe these medications. They don't know what the hell was happening with her. That made her situation worse and took her out of here much faster than she probably would have would have gone out of here. So I say all of that to say, I don't care how much you're paying. I don't care who you're paying. You need to take ownership over this journey. You need to be the one in the driver's seat. You need to be the inspector of your own hair all the time because only you can notice the subtle changes. Only you can notice the subtle changes. And by the time you notice it, you can rest assured it's probably started two or three re retightenings before you noticed it. But you just didn't notice it. I also have this thing where, and that might have contributed to it. It happened yesterday. I walked past uh, the door I leant down and one of these locks caught on to the to the door and I did like this and it snatched like that It didn't come out, but you better believe it weakened some strands. I'm laying on the bed like this All right, and my husband's hand is this way. I get ooh, it, ooh. I used to just ooh. Can you not like feel these locks like can you not and then move and then it, my hair is Y'all get the drift, right? So all I'm saying is that you have to be the advocate for your hair. You have to know what's going on with your hair. Um, you you want to transition transition in the journey from just being in a space of superficially experiencing the sister locks or the micro locks hair care hairstyle journey, and you want to be more intimately involved with experiencing the sister lock or the micro lock hair health journey or the hair care journey because it's just that serious. So. When I say my, my, my journey has, has changed, that's what I'm talking about. And when I say that my concern at this point is trying to lengthen the life cycle of my locks, trying to keep my scalp healthy so that I don't begin to have issues that uh, other people that I witness are starting to have, and uh, to try and um, be investigative when it comes to looking at different things you might need to do to your hair to make sure that it stays healthy because i got to tell y'all my hair is not this thick it is not as thick as it looks with all these daggone locks and i say that to say i got some weight on my head even if it doesn't feel like it remember i used to tell y'all they were feeling so heavy and i was gonna get them cut and all this and that and then i start washing better and all of a sudden they felt like that's where i am i'm experiencing the benefit of changing some things in my hair care routine but i'm not naive enough to think that my whole head at some point might have felt like this and that now all of a sudden i got all this on here and i ain't got to take some necessary precautions and do some things differently that goes for all of us even for those of you that have had thinning hair that your hair was thin before you got these locks do not be naive do not let somebody sit up there and be snatching on your hair and it's already thin. You already know where you're headed. You can see the train wreck right around the corner. It's just that serious. If it means you have to start doing your own locks, you might have to consider that. Uh, you may have to consider getting someone that you train to do your locks for you, okay? And that's not out of the question because I have thought about that. Being all the way out here in the boonies, let me get me a little a uh, high school student that loves to do hair. Let me train her on how I want her to do my hair. Because if I can do my own retightening, I can sure talk to somebody about doing them. And I can hire me a little high schooler if I have to at some point and teach her how I want her to uh, manage my hair. So you have options. Don't think that you don't have options. You have uh, a network. I, I, I've, I've, I've asked you all uh, 
You can always leave stuff in the comments if you're willing to work on somebody else's hair, if they work on your hair, if you live in the same city, all that type stuff. There may be a way that we have to start networking with that. I'll do a video about that soon so that we can help people network with other people. You can say your city and maybe you can list the names of really good locticians and people can call them or you can let them know I've been doing my own for four years. Um, I'd be willing to do someone else's if you help me do mine. Maybe it's a Saturday girl club kind of thing that people can do depending upon where you live. Is there are a lot of things to consider. You have a lot of options, but do not wait until you start having problems to start looking at some of those options. You want preventative maintenance, not breakdown maintenance. This is a long video. If you stuck to, through to the end, please put in the comments, I made it to the end. And up through the end of August the 31st, I will send you a special code so that you can get a better discount on the I Am Melanin Magic brand, okay? Let me know and just say, I made it to the end. I love you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And um, I hope that you're feeling empowered. I hope that you're feeling peaceful, productive, and prosperous.